a bit of controversy at the turkey trot race that I did. My official finishing time was like 30 seconds slower than I actually finished. And I'm really, really not sure what happened. I think the only thing I can figure is somehow my bib must have triggered either early before the start or late after the finish. Um, because there's video evidence and everything showing that I crossed uh, well under 19 minutes and my finishing time officially was 1924 something. So. Um, of course, this had to happen on a PR race, um, and I don't know exactly what my finishing time was. I had my Garmin watch, and I had the, the official uh, uh, clock at the race to go by, so I th I'm looking in the range of about 1850 to 1854, somewhere in there is probably where I crossed. I hit my watch after the second um, finish line, so... Um, that gave 1854, so I figured there was at least probably a second or two um, less than that um, when I crossed. Uh, the Strava segment for the race course gives me uh, 1850 finishing time. So, um, so the good news is I'm 99% sure it was a PR effort for me. All my splits were well under the uh, pace that the official time gave me. Um, I didn't do anything weird like cross the finish line twice or anything like that, so I really don't know how that mix-up happened. Um, but it's, it is kind of frustrating that it happened that way, but, um, and I, I don't know exactly what to say my PR is now because, um, I, there's just a range I can guess and I'm saying it said it was an 1854 at the slowest I, is, is what I'm kind of going with. So I was really happy with that. That was basically a 30 second PR in a, in a 5k, which is a pretty huge leap. Um, I've been doing speed training lately and it was really cool to see that pay off so I, I'm, I was really happy. I was just, uh, I, when I got towards the finish line I saw it was under 19 I was like oh my gosh I'm gonna go under 19. So I was really happy, really really happy and then disappointed with what my official results were. So um, so yeah it was a bit of a, a, a funny situation. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the official race photos because then I can hopefully see the bib number of the people who finished directly after and before me and kind of do the math that way and see, um, you know, take a guess at what my, what my PR is. But um, I ran the real smart race. Uh, my splits were progressively faster, um, mile one, two, three, and then the last tenth of, or uh, yeah, tenth of a mile. Um, so that was good to see. Um, it was a little bit misleading because the first mile was mostly uphill and then the second two I think were downhill um, so it's obviously easier to speed up when you're going downhill versus uphill but still I was really proud of myself to see that that split like my first split was like 615 and then like 606 or 607 and then 602 or something like that and then the last point one was like 530 or something pace so I had enough in the in the tank yet to really punch it home so and I felt really good the whole way pretty much I you know I was consciously trying to focus on having good form uh, you know and, um, uh, you know, consciously t telling myself to try to speed up as I went along and hang in there. Um, 5Ks are really tough because you're basically, you know, uh, you're going really fast the whole time. So um, it's not like a marathon where it's just a matter of can I sustain this pace. It's like, um, you know, you're dying on your feet in a 5K. You know, it's almost a sprint basically. So um, those are always uh, interesting for that reason. Uh, my legs are still two days later pretty much shot, shot um, walking a little funny these days, um, and that's what happens when you give a all-out effort like that, so I definitely feel it in the shorter races versus the longer races. My legs get uh, a lot more of a beat up by that, but um, it was a pretty much a perfect race. It was a little cool. It was probably, uh, you know, around freezing at the time of the race, um, but it wasn't windy. It wasn't snowing or raining or anything like that, so... Um, all in all, pretty good conditions. I tend to do, I tend to like colder weather, I think more than the average person. Like they usually say the best weather is like 40s and 50s for runners, but I think for me it even extends lower than that. Um, possibly because I'm so tall and got a lot more body mass that the colder uh, conditions um, do better for me to, you know, eliminate heat uh, better. So um, I usually feel like my last uh, 5K PR was in February. Um, so um, seems like I do real well when it's, you know, on the colder side. Um, so 
So yeah, that's about all I have to say. Um, it was a, it was you know pretty much flawless conditions. The race course is real good. It's pretty much flat. You do go uphill um, for quite a ways, like the first mile or so, but then you got the downhill on the way back. So um, it really is, I think, a pretty fast course. Downtown Lansing, you know, there's not really any uh, crazy obstacles or you know a lot of there's you know you basically go out and you do a loop around like this and then you come this way and then you come back. Um, so it's a pretty simple course, a few, you know, right hand turns and, uh, it's, it's pretty fast. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're running right down the downtown road. So nice wide roads and you don't have to worry about, uh, trails and dodging people and stuff like that. It is a huge race There were like, I think I heard someone say like 5,300 people signed up or something like that. Um, so one thing I would advise if you do ever run this race in Lansing is, um, make sure you... Uh, position yourself uh, in a smart place ahead of the slower runners. There still are slower runners that um, line up way too far ahead that you're going to have to dodge at the beginning. But if you can get out quick from the start and you know get out of the traffic, uh, you know after that it's pretty smooth uh, if you're on the faster end. So that's always kind of a trick to this race is there's so many people there and some of them are just walking and you know not serious runners. So you got to kind of watch out for them, and sometimes you got to zigzag if you start yourself too far back. So I would say error on the side of, um, if you are a faster runner, error on the side of going too far um, up to the front um, to avoid having to dodge uh, those people. But I always feel, I always have mixed feelings about that because I don't want to be the one getting in the faster people's way either. So, um, so but yeah, but this year wasn't too bad. At, right at the very beginning, there was a few people I zigzagged around, but then shortly after that, I got that. Uh, got on track. So, so yeah, uh, overall, I'm really, really happy with the, uh, the experience. I uh, set a new PR by a long shot. I wish I knew exactly what my finishing time was. I don't know what to call it. Um, the other cool thing about this is this basically puts me on track for a sub three marathon, um, according to the, you know, the race time predictor. So uh, that would be a, an absolute uh, dream of mine to be able to do that someday. So, um, so yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, went real well. And uh, that's about all I have to say about this. I'm going to have a shoe review coming up here. I might record it today yet um, for the Hupana. And uh, I'll be back. I'm not sure exactly when my next race is going to be. I might actually take it easy for a while here. Um, leading up to Boston, I'm going to start my marathon training in December. So um, still kind of thinking about whether to do another 5K maybe here in December or something like that. But we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure yet. But... Um, Subscribe if you like the content, if you want to keep up to date with all I'm doing. I'm leading up to Boston here, so that's really exciting. Um, I do shoe reviews and um, looking to do more gear reviews and stuff like that. So um, stay tuned and thanks for watching.